Well, the analysis we covered in the previous discussion around aggregate demand is known as Keynesian cross diagram. There, we determined the output and income through a basic model and learned about fundamentals of booms and bursts around the products and services market. You might remember that we had kept two variables constant there, the interest rates and prices. You might be wondering that in real world, the variables such as interest rates and prices change and change in a substantial manner. So, the assumptions taken earlier were unrealistic, isn't it? Let's now move our discussion closer to real world by relaxing assumption of constant interest rates. The prices are still assumed to be constant. This will make our model closer to the real world. Our objective is to make you competent enough to predict any real economy, a big task or at least understand it in the right sense. So, in this set of elbows, we would see how the product and services equilibrium changes with changes in interest rate. We would also introduce here another puzzle of the jigsaw, that is money markets. Following are the learning objectives of this module. Interest rate and its relation with planned investment spending, firms and households. Interest rate and its relation with net exports. Derivation of the IS curve. Equilibrium in the goods market. IS curve in detail. LM curve in detail. IS and LM together. Factors that shift the IS curve. Factors that shift the LM curve. Role of central bank in the economy. Response of change in fiscal policy on aggregate output. I think you would remember the product and services market equilibrium is determined by components such as C, I, G and X, right? Now, all these components are investments and consumptions in the economy and have to be supported by funds for carrying them out. The participants for the products and services market demand money to influence their respective C or I or G or NX components and the central bank controls the supply of the money. If the money supply is low, the aggregate output produced will also be low and hence the aggregate demand would decrease, isn't it? So, money market's equilibrium is an integral part of the overall jigsaw and gels into intricately with the product and services equilibrium. How is the money supply controlled? Through interest rate manipulations again. So, we would cover here the interest rate effects on money supply. So, we discussed two broad concepts. The interest rate effects on the aggregate demand analysis as we discussed previously and money demand and supply dynamics as we change the interest rates. In order to do this, we introduce here a new concept called ISLM which the learners find difficult to understand. For your reference, ISLM stands for Investment Saving or Liquidity Preference Money Supply Model. We would use this model to explain the equilibrium dynamics of both product or services markets and the money markets. Mind you, the price assumption still holds here. So, the real and nominal output is still directly proportional to the quantities produced or sold. IS seller model consists of two sub-models. IS and LM. IS captures 
the equilibrium aggregate output versus interest rate movements. This is done in three steps. The first step is to examine the effect of interest rates on the components of aggregate demand, that is consumption, planned investment spending and net exports. Next, we use the cross diagram that we learned in the previous discussion to see how the interest rate affects the equilibrium level of aggregate output. The resulting relationship between equilibrium aggregate output and the interest rate is known as the IS curve. LM captures the equilibrium interest rate versus aggregate output. This is done in three steps. The first step is to examine the effect of aggregate output or national income on money demand. Next, we use the money market dynamics to see how movement in money demand affects the equilibrium level of money market, that is, interest rate. The resulting relationship between equilibrium interest rate and the output or national income is known as the LM curve. The other model with the LM curve describes the combinations of interest rates and aggregate output for which the quantity of money demanded equals the quantity of money supplied. So, IS curve maps the interest movements with the products and services market. The LM curve maps the interest movements with the money demand or supply market. Furthermore, just as a demand curve alone cannot tell us the quantity of goods sold in a market, the IS curve by itself cannot tell us what the level of aggregate output will be because the interest rate is still unknown. Similarly, just as a supply curve alone cannot tell us the quantity of goods sold in the market, the LM curve by itself cannot tell us the equilibrium point. When the IS and LM curves are combined in the same diagram, the intersection of the two determines the equilibrium level of aggregate output as well as the interest rate. This is the point where the aggregate demand is equal to aggregate output in the product and services market and the money demand is equal to money supply in the money markets. We would build the story step by step in this discussion. Okay, let us go to boardroom of Mr. Karthik and ask him how interest rates affect his company decisions. Very simple. Interest rates have a critical effect on our actions. As you know, we do investments in physical capital like machines, factories and raw materials in order to improve our efficiencies of operations. This in turn led to better sales and profits for us. We see interest rates as the opportunity cost of funds, the cost at which we borrow from the banks. Broadly speaking, we will make physical investments as long as we expect to earn more from them than the interest cost of a loan to finance the investment. When the interest rate is high, very few investments in physical capital will earn more than the cost of loans. So, planned investment spending from companies like us will be low. When the interest rate is low, many investments in physical capital will earn more than the interest cost of loans. Therefore, when interest rates are lower, business firms like us are more likely to undertake an investment in physical capital and 
plant investment spending hmm another question would interest rate matter to you even if you have high surplus funds inside the company to invest in the projects even if i have surplus funds which i can deploy to undertake an investment in physical capital my investment spending will still be affected by the interest rate see it's again about opportunity cost of deploying the surplus funds i always have a choice of either investing in my plant investment programs or to invest it in securities in the market such as any safe corporate or government bonds if the interest rate on this security is high the opportunity cost that is foregone interest earnings of an investment in physical capital is higher so plant investment spending will be low in this case i would probably prefer to purchase the security than to invest in physical capital if interest rate on securities falls then opportunity cost of investing falls planned investment spending will increase because investments in physical capital are likely to earn greater income for the firm than the investment in securities i would like to summarize my answer by saying that interest rates are inversely related to plant investment spending by firms like us that is increase in interest rate decrease the plant investment and decrease in interest rates increase the plant investment good insightful by karthik if interest rates are high firms investment spending tends to reduce and if the interest rates are low the investment spending tends to increase let's now see how increase in interest rate impact mr shashank's life you will remember that shashank is a consumer an employee in a firm hey shashank this time i'm here to know how interest rate impact on your life mr means you are too restless is all i can say you keep coming again and again i respect you like my father so i will answer your question see interest rates affect me mainly in my personal investment decisions which i mainly do through loans things like my house car furniture color tv washing machine and microwave are all financed through some finance companies i have to pay monthly emis and all things which are combination of principal loan amount and interest on the loan amount needless to say the higher the interest rate the higher the emis right naturally i want to pay as less emis as possible so if interest rates are lower i am likely to buy more things through loans and if interest rates are high spending will be much lower from my side in a nutshell if interest rates are high my spending are low and vice versa thanks shashank we'll catch you again for more silly questions so friends we got the straightforward answer that is interest rates rise will reduce plant investment spending by consumers like mr shashank and vice versa this interest sensitivity of consumer expenditure can be allowed for in the model here by defining plant investment spending more generally to include the interest sensitive component 
of consumer expenditure. Let's now see how interest rate impacts net exports. For this, we have to meet foreign consumers and foreign investors. Let's invite one guest who is a professional international investor and very experienced in investing in foreign countries. How do interest rate movements in foreign countries impact your decision about investing in the country? Well, when interest rates rise in foreign country, their bank deposits become more attractive than domestic country banks. This makes me to buy foreign country currency to deposit in their banks, thereby causing a rise in its demand. This, of course, leads to an appreciation of the foreign country currency and correspondingly a depreciation of domestic currency. Now, let's meet our guest who imports goods from foreign countries and sells in domestic country and ask him how foreign currency appreciation impacts the demand of foreign goods in domestic country. Very simple. The higher the value of foreign currency means that domestic consumer have to spend more to buy goods denominated in foreign currency. As a result, demand of foreign goods falls down in domestic country. Based on the discussion with Mr. Importer, we can conclude that rise in interest rates makes foreign deposits more attractive for investors from other countries, which results in the appreciation of that currency. Means, we need to exchange foreign currency with more domestic currency and purchase foreign goods and services. So, appreciation of foreign currency results in foreign goods becoming more expensive than domestic goods, thereby causing a fall in net exports from foreign country. So, high interest rate results in high exchange rate. Therefore, low net exports and hence low aggregate demand. Similarly, low interest rate results in low exchange rate. Therefore, high net export and hence high aggregate demand. We can now use what we have learned about the relationship of interest rates to planned investment spending of both firms and consumers and net exports in panels A and B to examine the relationship between interest rate and the equilibrium level of aggregate output by holding government spending and autonomous consumer expenditure constant.